Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is gonna be kind of a quick off the cuff. I don't wanna call it a review, it's gonna be more of an unboxing and a first look and some basic testing for this new little device, the Blackmagic Deck Link Mini Recorder 4K. This is a brand new product from Blackmagic and there's a very specific reason why I bought this very quickly when I spotted it and that's because I have two Panasonic Lumix GH4 cameras and uh, these GH4s have an HDMI out over here on the side and it's a kind of unique feature of this camera that it can actually output pretty high resolution. Uh, it actually can do 422 10-bit uh, uh, 4K resolution out of the HDMI out and you can use that with something like an Atomos Shogun. Atomos? Atomos? I don't know how that's pronounced. Anyway, the Shogun, which is an external recorder uh, that you can get and you plug it in here and that will allow you to record in that really high resolution with really good color depth. Um, however, for some reason, the existing version of Blackmagic's 4K capture card, the 4K version of this guy right here, this is the Intensity Pro, um, but for some inexplicable reason, unless you use outdated firmware, the Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K will not accept the 4K signal from the GH4. So I'm really hoping that this new one will work for that since it does support some new standards. And then I'm also hoping that I can use it to capture direct 4K gameplay footage and then also hopefully even 21x9, 30 by 14 40 but again that remains to be seen. I purchased this from Amazon, uh, it was about 190 US dollars, and again this only just came out so there's really not many reviews or anything like that on it. Uh, so again Blackmagic Design has an SDI input as well as an HDMI input. Uh, works with DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Meteor Composer, and Photoshop. Ultra HD 6 gig SDI connector. I'm not going to be using the SDI, I'm going to mainly be using that HDMI because it is HDMI 2.0. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm hoping this might work whereas the Intensity Pro 4K doesn't is it is HDMI 2.0a, 21p30 uh, resolution capture, uh, but it also even very specifically lists 2160p, 30 frames per second, true 10 and 12 bit broadcast quality input with 16 channels of embedded audio. So those are specs, oh also down here, YUV422 RGB, uh, YUV422 RGB444. Included in the box so you get a little welcome guide, includes a 4 gig SD card with the software and manual installed on it, it's kind of nice. Uh, does come with a low profile bracket, so for a smaller form factor capture system, this could also be an option since this is a fairly small little capture card in and of itself. And there it is, you do have an active cooling fan on there, uh, PCI Express by 4 interface, this is a Gen 2 by 4, it'll still work in a Gen 3 uh, connection. And then of course just your very simple, simple inputs, uh, HDMI 2.0a right there and then a 6G SDI connector. This is a connection type called BNC, uh, which is a locking connector, which is actually a really nice connector, but it's more used in professional video production environments. So uh, I do not have something that can connect up to that. If you get like a professional camera, for example, it might have an SDI out. And in fact, that's another option besides paying two grand for the Atomos Shogun for this, there is actually an, uh, an add-on piece you can get for the GH4 which again costs about two grand that adds like some SDI connectors and that kind of thing. But I'm seeing if I can do this on the cheap. So the Atomos Shogun uh, can do that really high resolution, uh, high bit rate, high color depth capture, uh, but you need to spend $2,000 on a device like that. Um, if this works, it might be a, a $200 alternative, although this one does have some drawbacks. So let me go over those real quick. So one thing you might notice is this only has HDMI in, which means you can't use the pass-through. So here's the uh, Blackmagic Intensity Pro has an in as well as an out. So if you're capturing from a game console, for example, uh, you can go in with the console and then out, and then you can actually still play on whatever monitor you're using or whatever. This does not have that option, although there is a display out that you can get as well as this, which again costs another $190, so it is a more expensive solution. Um, since I'm capturing straight to a computer, that shouldn't be an issue for me, I hope. Um, but again, that is something that you lose, is the pass-through to get a video out from whatever you're capturing from. Another potential limitation, uh, if you compare it to something like this, which is the Elgato Game Capture HD60, uh, again has the HDMI in, I believe that's the inside, yeah, in as well as out, but this has the benefit of being external and connected via USB 2.0. This does have, again, some drawbacks since it is USB 2.0, but it is portable. Uh, I also have 
this guy right here, uh, which is the Razer Rip Saw, um, which is also a pretty nice capture device. So this one's nice because it's got the HDMI pass-through, it's got USB 3.0, so you don't have to wait for buffering or anything like that, but can't do 4K, although it can do 1080-60 pretty nicely. So I have installed the DeckLink Mini Recorder 4K in the capture system over here, just in the PCI Express slot down there. Just gonna have this installed for right now, um, and I've gone ahead and downloaded the uh, software from the Blackmagic website and installed it. And now in the desktop video setup, uh, I can actually see the capture device listed. So let's start the first test setup. So I have uh, an HDMI cable coming here, plugged over into the input on the uh, capture card. If you have HDMI cables and you're worried about the HDMI 2.0, as long as your HDMI cable is HDMI 1.4 or newer, it'll still work with HDMI 2.0, or at least from what I've read. We'll see if that actually plays out here. And then on my GH4, I gotta go over here into the settings for the HDMI output, and here's where we can actually set stuff like the bit mode, so we want the bit mode to be 10 bits. Cannot record to the memory card with this setting. Well, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then I don't care about inflow display, and we want 4K down convert to be off because we want it to stay at 4K. You just plug in the HDMI over here. The screen should go off for a second as it switches over to HDMI out. And now let's see if it's picking up on the computer. And it seems to have worked, at least on initial inspection. This is the desktop video sup setup software uh, the Blackmagic has provide provided. It uh, seems to have been improved upon a little bit here too. Um, but you can tell SDNI and HDMI inputs and it recognizes this device and everything. And we can already see right here HDMI 2160p24. So it is outputting at 24 frames per second, 4K. Let's see if we have the proper bitrate. All right guys, I've just spent the last maybe two to three hours messing with this thing and uh, I've had my share of ups and downs as I've gone along, but I'm happy to say that at least what you're watching right now is being recorded in 4K directly through that capture card. But uh, there are some limitations, there are some, of course, bits of quirkiness with it, and I think what we're really suffering from right now is a lack of software support from the capture software side, specifically with XSplit. But anyway, uh, I'm going to do some ghetto recording of the screens right here and show you guys what I found. So first off, after setting up the camera properly to output in 4K and 10-bit uh, and all that good stuff, uh, it was recognized again by the Deck Link Mini Recorder 4K software, the desktop video setup. Uh, and then the next thing that I did was I actually loaded up the actual Deck Link software. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the actual Media Express software, uh, which had a little reflection in there, uh, which is right here and which shows, thankfully, that it's working. So there's me recording the screen of me recording the screen. Wow, this is getting crazy. Um, but anyway, so this worked and this showed that this is 4K and this is functional and, and it's working. So that's good. That means that my capture card works. Now what I did was I used the actual capture feature down here. Uh, and there's a, diff there's a few different options you can do in here in the preferences to determine uh, what your actual video settings are, what the resolution is, as well as the capture file format. So I went through all these file formats and I found that uh, if I'm using AVI, 10-bit, YUV, or RGB, it basically captures in lossless format, which ends up being really large file size. AVI Motion JPEG uh, records and does some compression, but it does not do 10-bit. What this meant was that my uh, test files I was running here are like insanely huge. Uh, this is like over two gigs per second that it's recording at. Uh, that is using, wait, that's using AVI 10-bit YUV, uh, switching over to AV or, or, or uh, RGB 10-bit was even worse, and in fact led to this file being uh, almost three gigabytes per second. So these are like 20, 15 or 20 second clips, and this one is 5.23 gigs. This one is 6.74 gigs, that's pretty insane. The third test I did uh, was again using AVI. So what that ends up being is a much more reasonable file size, uh, more like 200 megabits, which is a lot more reasonable for 4K. Um, but then it also was not doing uh, actual 10-bit uh, though in that in that case. So if you use media, I used media info here to scan the file and we can see here some of the details of it, such as the uh, bit rate that it's going at. 242 megabits per second. Uh, and then we also have the actual color depth and chroma subsampling. So chroma subsampling is 422. 
and bit depth is 8 bits. So we are recording in a reasonable format. Um, but the problem here was that with these other videos here, and I can kind of sort of start to play them back, you might notice they are insanely choppy and basically it's dropping frames all over the place. I think what this is a result of is the fact that I'm not using really high speed uh, storage. I'm recording to an external USB 3 SSD. Why this is huge? It's crazy. Uh, recording to an external USB 3 SSD, but that's not fast enough for the bit rates that these are actually recording at. So that was my downfall there. So I'm going to need to set up some high-speed storage on the system if I want to capture directly. Probably a couple SSDs in RAID. The good news though, I mean the upshot here, is that it is working. I am capturing straight from the GH4. Uh, I'm doing it at 4K and I'm doing it at, or at least have the availability for the higher uh, bit rates and uh, color depths, so that's cool. My goal though, of course, was to use this with XSplit uh, and possible, well, ideally XSplit because I've heard XSplit can do 10 bit. Um, unfortunately, XSplit is just completely non functional, at least when it comes to getting video with this capture card. I have tried literally just about every single possibility. Uh, I've tried using Decklink Video Capture, I've tried Blackmagic WM WDM Capture. I have tried going into the video input settings for all of these. Uh, Decklink Video Capture does not even have 4K listed down here as an option, so I think that is a software update that needs to be made. Uh, when you do the WDM option, WDM capture, it does uh, give you some more options, or at least you can go in there and manually tell it to do 4K, but it's still the same results. I am getting audio through the camera. Uh, it does actually pick that up, but it's just black video, and I have found no way around that. So XSplit, uh, update your shit so it works with this capture card. Uh, OBS, on the other hand, was working for me, um, fortunately, although I was encountering really weird, kind of crazy issues with the studio version, so I ended up going to um, just the classic OBS. Uh, and this seems to be working. So I was able, was able to use this to record myself, and it worked. And I recorded that, to, I used this to record the stuff that you might have heard just a few moments ago. And look, there's me, hoping things will work as I start talking. But it did work, I was able to compress it on the fly, and I ended up with a file over here, which is um, not a, as high a bitrate as I would have wanted, it's only about um, 15 megabits, um, but it's still 30 frames per second, it's still 3840 by 2160. Um, again, the only downside here though, is that this is not recording uh, using the full color chroma options. So yeah, down here. It's only uh, recording at, where did it go, 420 for chroma subsampling, and uh, it is only recording at 8 bits. But it is recording, and if you compare that to using a GH4 with the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, I suppose that is an improvement. Well guys, just to sort of sum up the additional tests I've done after my uh, capture tests with the GH4, which were somewhat successful, Unfortunately, I have had bad luck since then. So my first attempt uh, was with my Acer Predator X34 monitor back there, and I was hoping what I could do is take this system here, output it to thir at 3440 by 1440, 21 by 9 to that monitor, and then clone the output to uh, the HDMI out to send over to be captured. That did not work. So I decided to take the Predator X34 out of the mix, and I disconnected it, uh, I originally had a longer cable going here with an extension, and then I started to get worried because it wasn't working that I didn't have uh, fully compatible HDMI 2.0 cables, or that my uh, my coupler wasn't uh, fully compatible or whatever. So I moved this whole system over here so I could take the one cable that I know worked, because I had it connected to that camera and it was working there, and just that is connected to this via HDMI. I uh, was not able to clone 4K monitor and then 4K capture, was not able to use extended mode, like, like it's set up right here, and capture the extended monitor, was not able to even plug just the HDMI in directly and capture that at 4K 30 frames per second. I have pretty much given up trying right now. I have literally spent two hours going through different settings and everything, so initial uh, thoughts on the Decklink Mini Recorder 4K are not good at this point. While it has succeeded in getting a 4K 
10-bit signal from my GH4, which I give it a thumbs up for, and I guess if I'm going down pros right now, the little fan that's on there, uh, even with my capture system over here and the side panel off, not audible at all. I mean, I haven't gotten up right next to it, but it's definitely not something that's loud. So that's good. That was a complaint on the Intensity Pro 4K. Um, but the fact that it simply cannot capture a 4K 30 FPS signal from my, my, my freaking gaming system right here, which I know it's a 1080. It's running out of GTX 1080 in there. I know it's outputting the right signal because it's coming through just fine on here. Uh, so I have no idea what else is going on, but I've pretty much run out of time. Anyway, uh, thanks you guys for watching this video. I hope it's been illuminating to some of you, any of you who are interested in capturing 4K footage, for example. Um, hopefully I'll be able to come back to it in the future after I've done some more testing, had a little bit more time, maybe given the software a chance to update uh, when it comes to stuff like XSplit and OBS, because those were giving me issues too. Anyway though, I hope you guys have learned a little bit from this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.